Royal Caribbean's grandeur of the seas may be its oldest cruise ship, but that doesn't mean it's a bad idea to go on this ship for a cruise vacation. We have a full walkthrough tour of grandeur of the seas up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Grandeur of the Seas may be small by today's standards, but that doesn't mean it's a bad choice. Carrying 1,992 guests at double occupancy, that's 2,444 at maximum occupancy, it's actually quite large, measuring 73,817 gross tons and stretching 12 decks high, 11 of those decks are for guests. Launched in 1996, the ship has been refurbished and continually maintained, and we have a look at the ship today in our tour. Starting with the pool deck on uh, decks 9 and 10 midship. Of course, every Royal Caribbean cruise ship has its pool deck, and Grandeur of the Seas being a Vision class ship, its pool deck is the classic pool deck experience with lots of loungers, of course, the pools, hot tubs. It's where you're going to go on a sea day or embarkation day to go enjoy some time out in the sun because a lot of people love going out here it's just the quintessential cruise deck experience you're going to find plenty of other people going out here to enjoy your time now there's the main pool which is flanked by different hot tubs and this main pool is open to all guests and it's just basically first come first serve certainly on warm weather days in which you're out at sea it's going to be a very popular place to go Grand Tour of the Sea certainly has an intimate feeling about it, especially if you've been on Royal Caribbean's bigger ships. There's plenty of seating all around, and you're going to find that the pool area is definitely expansive enough to find a quiet area. But if you want to be part of the crowd, you're going to find it certainly here on the pool deck, especially again on sea days, embarkation day. Heck, when people come back to the ship after a port day, a lot of people go up to this pool deck and will enjoy time up there. You're also going to find a pool bar near the pool deck. Not terribly surprising of the name anyway. And there's plenty of drinks to enjoy here. Your Royal Caribbean drink packages do work, or you can purchase a drink individually. With a drink package, you can enjoy unlimited drinks for one fixed price. Whether or not you should get a drink package or just stick to paying for each drink individually is up to you. It kind of depends essentially on how much you're planning on drinking. And again, when you're on vacation, that can definitely change compared to when you're at home. But ultimately, you know, somewhere around the ballpark of six to eight drinks a day, is probably the quote unquote break even point that might compel you to pick up a drink package. You can purchase one before the cruise on Royal Caribbean's website, and it can be used at any of the bars, restaurants, or lounges we're about to see in this video. There's also the lifeguard station, which is also right next to the towel station. You don't need to bring towels with you from home. There's no need for that. You can simply rent towels at the towel station. There's no charge for towels. Just make sure you bring it back. There's also a complimentary soft serve ice cream at the pool deck and as it implies, you just simply go up there and get as much as you want. Keep going back and forth, lots of ice cream throughout the day. There's also ping pong tables on the pool deck. Ping pong tables have no cost. Pick up paddles, give it a try. You'll find the jogging track on deck 10, which is the upper pool deck area. So the jogging track serves two purposes. One is the actual jogging track to go walk or jog or run on. You're also going to find a number of loungers up here. The nice thing about the upper pool deck here on deck 10 is it allows you to be a little more secluded, a little quieter, but also get unfiltered sunlight. For people that want a suntan or simply just get away from the crowds, this is definitely the spot for you. The further forward or back you go, the less crowds you're going to find. There's also this like half deck, I don't know, this is deck 13, I guess we'll call it, where you can go up here and literally you're not gonna find a soul. And the only issue with this area is of course, there's no service up here, no waiters, no bars, but people that go up here, tend to want to have a very quiet, secluded experience. And it's kind of a neat little hidden area that many people may not be aware of. Back down on deck 10 again, you're going to find also plenty of great vantage points, great spots for sail away when you're on a ship like the Vision class. We're going to move now back towards again, the jogging track and there's lots of seating and loungers. My favorite thing to do is on a sea day is find one of these loungers in a shaded area and hang out there. There's a rock climbing wall on Grandeur of the Seas. Now, Grandeur may not have all the whiz-bang features that you're going to find on the bigger Royal Caribbean cruise ships, but it does have a rock wall. There is no cost to use the rock wall. Simply first come, first serve is offered pretty much every day of your cruise, and there's different difficulty levels with the different tracks to get up there. And if you get to the top, ring the bell, and you'll be able to celebrate the fact that you made it all the way up there. And then, of course, come on back down. The nice thing about the rock climbing wall is it is not very intimidating in the sense that anybody who's never rock climbed before can definitely give it a try. It's certainly a great challenge. Kids can do it. Adults can do it. And it tends to be one of the more popular activities on any Royal Green cruise ship, including Grandeur of the Seas. There's also a foosball table that, again, anybody can enjoy. The nice thing about Royal Caribbean is they put these little 
things around the ship, little activities, right? Ping pong, shuffleboard, something to do. And maybe this isn't the highlight of your cruise, but something you could do certainly as you're walking by. And shuffleboard has been a classic cruise ship experience going back decades. And yes, you can play shuffleboard. There's no cost. The equipment is located nearby. Pick it up, give it a try. Some people just kind of, you know, shuffle it around. Some people actually play by the rules, up to you. Now, of course, the pool deck is we're gonna go for a sail away party on embarkation day. Weather permitting, there will be a pool deck party up here to celebrate the start of the cruise. Heck, during your cruise, there'll be other events up here. There could be early morning fitness classes. There could be dancing, DJs. Anyway, go up here, enjoy the Cupid Shuffle, Macarena, and all the other dances to really get you in the mood for being on vacation. All right, we're gonna head into the Solarium next. The Solarium is on deck nine. This is the adults only area for guests that are at least 18 years old or older. Royal Caribbean changed the rules about the Solarium from 16 to 18 in 2023. And that basically means that adults are the only ones allowed here to hang out and enjoy the facilities. Kids can walk through from point A to point B, so don't worry about that. But the Solarium pool and the loungers are reserved only for guests that are 18 years old or older. Now the Solarium has two benefits. One, it's adults only. Two, it's totally enclosed by glass. That means it's climate controlled in here. So no matter how hot or rainy or cold it is outside, the weather should be pretty good here in this enclosed solarium. They're gonna find a hot tub along with a pool in the solarium. And it's a pretty big area given the size of the ship. Solariums on other bigger real cruise ships tend to be a little bit smaller in terms of feel and square footage. But here on Grandeur, you're gonna find a giant solarium area. Now the loungers do go quickly. So if you want one of these padded loungers, Make sure you get there early. You're also gonna find different chairs and tables you can sit at, but it's a very, very popular destination. There is the Solarium Bar in the Solarium, and this is where you can go to get drinks. There'll also be waiter service that walks around the Solarium, but if you wanna get a drink, your best bet is simply walk up to the Solarium Bar and order a drink. One of my favorite go-to pool drinks is definitely the Lava Flow with Kraken Rum. I love this drink. It is like a pina colada with a fruit mix. Make sure you ask for Kraken Rum that rum just with a combination of pina colada really tastes good. I think what we're seeing here is Angie not listening to my recommendation. Walking through the solarium area, you're also gonna find Park Cafe. Park Cafe is a complimentary grab and go dining venue. It's a casual place to get a sandwich or a slice of pizza or a soup or a salad. Now Park Cafe is available to all guests. It is in the solarium. Don't worry, kids can go in here to get food. They just can't hang out in here. That's the only difference. But this is where you can go to get, of course, get the Sorrento's pizza on grandeur of the seas. Every Royal Caribbean cruise ship offers pizza. This is where you can get that. But there's also sandwiches, especially the Kemmelwick roast beef sandwich, which is really good. I highly recommend that. There's also salads. And Park Cafe is open in the afternoon and into the evening and late night. So it's a good spot for like, hey, I'm kind of hungry, would love something to eat, but you're not looking to go to the Windjammer or sit down at a restaurant. You're just something quick and easy. This is the place for it. There are also complimentary drink stations in the solarium. Again, you'll have water, flavored water, so you can go here and grab something to drink and be on your way. The nice thing about, of course, Park Cafe is the convenience factor, right? It's right in the solarium, it's right on the pool deck, it's great for something to eat on your way. Vitality Spa and Fitness Center is our next stop on Grandeur of the Seas. So the Vitality Spa is where you can go to get a massage or a service, as well as, of course, go to the salon here. Now, everything in the Vitality Spa and Salon does cost extra. You can purchase it before the cruise or you can purchase it on board the sailing. Should you purchase it pre-cruise or on board? It's kind of a mixed bag there, right? Pre-cruise, you get a better discount if you book a massage or a service in the salon or spa, assuming that it's a single treatment. On board the ship, there can be different combo deals and discounts available. It's not quite the same thing that you could have purchased before the cruise. So again, it kind of depends, but there's advantages to booking pre-cruise in the sense that you can, of course, just be able to spend it early and not have a giant bill later on. When you go to the spa, there's also going to be an area where you can sit down, relax, and you know, wait for your service to begin. And as I mentioned, there is a salon on here. You get your hair done, your nails done, and yes, men can go in here as well and get a haircut or even a shave. The prices for the salon and the spa do vary, and certainly on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, I think you're gonna find higher prices than you would maybe at somewhere in port that you're going to, but the service is really good here. We've never been disappointed with a spa or salon, and it's just something nice to treat yourself. Maybe you wanna have your hair done for a formal night. Maybe you just wanna relax and enjoy a nice treatment. That's available as well. Upstairs from the spa is the Vitality Fitness Center, AKA the Ship Gym. And you might be surprised by how nice the gym is, how much equipment there is. 
you know, oftentimes you go to a hotel or a resort somewhere and the fitness center is kind of stuck in a corner in a closet and there's a couple of things here, but you're gonna find plenty of machines and free weights and bikes and treadmills and everything you're gonna need to really keep in shape. The fitness center is available throughout the day, every day of your cruise. So you just need to go up here and it's just like probably your gym at home. First come, first serve. It tends to get very busy in the beginning of the cruise because everyone's like, I'm gonna work out on this cruise. And then by day three, they're like, I'm just gonna eat on this cruise. <laughs> We'll just kind of forget about it. There's also in the fitness center, showers and places to change. There's also a steam room, which is complimentary. So this is the nice thing about some of the older ships, whereas steam rooms and saunas were extra cost, but here on Grandeur, it's included. So take advantage of it. All right, now that we worked out, it's time to get something to eat. And next stop is the Windjammer Deck 9 Forward. The Windjammer is the complimentary buffet that's available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day of your cruise, and this is a casual grab-and-go buffet. The nice thing about the Windjammer, there is, there's a great variety of food. There's no dress code here, other than like, you just can't walk in with like a bathing suit or a wet bathing suit anyway, but it's really easy. There's a lot of different food. And what I love about it again is the variety, especially for lunch and dinner, you're gonna find all sorts of food. The breakfast menu tends to be pretty standard, you know, your eggs and pancakes and toast and whatnot. But when you get to lunch and dinner, you're gonna find a good variety of food and some things change, some things stay the same, but it's a nice option to have just that good variety of different food to try. And it's good for picky eaters or adventurous eaters. I think you're gonna find a lot of cool things. You see here the stir fry station. This actually reminds me of a really important thing to look for, which are these cooking stations that you can find on Grandeur of the Seas in the Windjammer, because they do change every day. And it's nice to get freshly cooked food right in front of you. You're also gonna find complimentary drinks in the Windjammer, coffee, waters, flavored waters. The Coke machine you're seeing here is actually a Coca-Cola freestyle machine. That is only available if you have a soda package or a drink package. But of course you can always order drinks a la carte or with your drink package if you have that there. But included were going to be things just again, water, tea, milk, flavored waters, and coffee. The nice thing about the Windjammer essentially is that it's just casual, easy to get to, and if you're not feeling like dressing up for dinner or going to the main dining room or especially restaurant, you can certainly go here. And I really enjoy the good variety. My favorite thing to get in the Windjammer for dinner is by far the Indian curry. I love Indian food. And you can find a good selection of that too. But the Asian stir fry is fantastic. And sometimes it's just really nice to get chicken tenders because who doesn't love chicken tendies, right? Not bad at all. Certainly if my kids were up there, they'd be eating chicken tendies and uh, enjoying that quite a bit. You're gonna find a lot of seating around the Windjammer. Uh, the seating that goes here is again, first come first serve. So try your best there. Now there is a main dining room on deck four and five and the main dining room on Grandeur of the Seas is a staple of really the cruise ship experience. The main dining room is open for breakfast and dinner every day of your cruise. For lunch, it's only available on sea days. Now for dinner, we'll talk about that primarily. You're gonna choose when you book your cruise, either my time dining or traditional. Traditional is when you have the same table, the same time, same table mates, and same waiter every day of your cruise. My time allows more flexibility, but you do need to make a reservation or wait in line for an available table. Which one should you book? It's really up to you. In the main dining room, you're gonna have a variety of food offered. Every day, there'll be a different menu served for dinner in the main dining room. The breakfast menu stays the same. The lunch menu, when available, does rotate as well. Now there's a theme to the dinner menus and theme is very loose. So it might be like French night, but you're still gonna find like non-French food in there. And the nice thing about the main dining room, of course, is the service, the ambiance, and the quality of food. I really like the fact that the main dining room offers a good mix of food in here, especially when you consider that there's international foods, classics, and I find that there's enough for somebody to find something to eat here. No matter how picky you are, there's probably something you can find in the main dining room. My favorite thing to do is to just try a couple different things. Remember, the food is included in the, I have no idea what that guy's doing. The food is included in the main dining room and the nice thing about it is you can order as much of it as you want. Meaning you don't have to limit yourself to one entree, one dessert, one appetizer. You go in there and you can order two, three appetizers or two or three entrees or even seven desserts if you'd like to. I don't know if there are seven, but you get the kind of idea there. There's a conference center on deck four aft. Odds are you will never ever have to come here. But if you're part of a group, this is where you'd go to the conference center. So it's available on board. But again, if you're not part of a group, there's no reason that you would ever want to or need to go to the conference center, but they have one on board. So maybe tell your boss you want to do a conference on a cruise ship. The Centrum is really the hub of activity on any Vision class ship. The Centrum runs between decks four 
and eight is located midship and it's essentially a giant lobby that's vertical so if you're at the bottom you can just look straight up and it's right in the middle of the ship and many of the decks meet right here in the centrum the centrum is not only a pretty area to look at because it really is you're gonna find a lot of different venues and activities held in the centrum area this really is a absolute hub of activity on board grandeur of the seas as i mentioned there'll be different activities and events held here and the cool thing about it is you don't have to necessarily be on deck four to witness it you can see what's going on from any of the higher decks in fact a lot of people like just going around sitting at one of the chairs that overlooks in the centrum and essentially people watching you'll find the r bar at the very bottom though of deck four in the centrum the r bar is a bar area which of course serves up all sorts of signature drinks and whatnot it's kind of a fun place to go to and grab a drink while you're watching one of the shows there's also a small library located in the centrum as well near the r bar the library essentially is a take one put one back kind of concept i don't know what kind of books you can really expect to find here there's not a huge selection but it is available next cruise is also in the centrum next cruise is where you can go to book another royal caribbean cruise by booking a cruise on board your ship you're going to get reduced deposit and extra onboard credit the price is exactly the same whether you book at home or next cruise it's just those extra two benefits that really stand out there's also the royal caribbean online which is basically the internet cafe on board there are computers you can use you will need an internet package there is no free wi-fi to use the actual internet there is wi-fi to use if you want to use royal caribbean's app but if you want to you know check in for your flight or check your email you could go here and use one of the machines but you still need an internet package my advice is just use your phone it's much better but anyway guest services is also available here guest services is where you go if you have any questions or concerns on grandeur of the seas right people go here for billing issues mechanical issues complaints whatever the case may be you go here to guest services and guest services is available 24 hours a day for any issues that you might have there's also the shore excursion desk right next to the guest services area shore excursions is where you go to well book a shore excursion change your shore excursion cancel one ideally you'll book it before the cruise but you certainly go here to ask questions or maybe make a last minute booking that's available as well and right nearby is the loyalty ambassador the loyalty ambassador is where you can go to meet someone who can help you with your royal caribbean cruising career so to speak with the crown and anchor society there's many benefits there and they can answer questions about that cafe latitudes is where you can go to get a premium coffee now they do offer coffee that is free included in your cruise fare but there's also hot and cold coffees available for an extra cost now if you buy a royal caribbean drink package the deluxe beverage package or the royal refreshment package coffees here are actually included alternatively you can purchase a coffee card that has a preset punch card of available drinks that you can use throughout your cruise the nice thing about the drink card is you can share it with somebody else the drink packages you cannot share you're also gonna find pastries and snacks here kind of like park cafe but in a different location so if you want something to eat this is a great grab and go maybe it goes along with your coffee maybe you're just hungry and want a sandwich you can stop by here and grab something cafe latitudes is open throughout the day and evening so look for it over there Ben and Jerry's is also located here Ben and Jerry's of course being the classic ice cream brand Ben and Jerry's costs extra there is an extra charge for this and so you just pay for it as you go there as you might imagine a lot of people go to Cafe Latitudes in the morning to get their Java fix you're also going to find in the centrum the art gallery and the art gallery serves as a place to go to preview the art you can later bid on during an art auction all Royal Caribbean cruise ships have art auctions and whether or not you go to the art auction or not you can still look at the artwork and see what it's like here in fact they do change the art throughout the cruise to give you different ideas and different pieces you could bid on i just like walking by and looking and checking it out personally but you know if you want to bid on that and go to the action it's a whole different ball game there we have the photo gallery up next photo gallery is where you can go to preview the prints of photos that you took around the ship so every day of your cruise there's going to be photographers around to take your photo there's no obligation or cost to use any of these photographers but later on if you want to purchase one of the prints you can view them over there there's also photo accessories and add-ons that you can get if you forgot maybe a memory card or want to purchase a camera you can do so in the photo gallery as well my advice is don't forget them like do it now because the prices i'm sure are just retail but you can get definitely a better deal if you purchase it before your cruise moving around the center you can see there's a lot of great vantage points and being a vision class ship there's a lot of glass around you too it's a beautiful ship lots to see and do and i just love being able to stare out into the ocean it's just really pretty and there's just so many views all around you. you have to go very far to be able to enjoy just how pretty this ship is 
And that's something that really doesn't make, you know, a Royal Caribbean commercial or anybody comes home and goes, hey guys, I went on Grandeur of the Seas. It was so pretty. No, it's just like nice to see artwork around the ship, be able to see the views outside. It just adds to the ambiance and makes it just a great and beautiful ship to be on. So my advice is explore and walk around, especially on embarkation day. Get the lay of the land. This video is going to help you a lot, I think, understand that, but you know, you got to be able to visualize it. In the evening, the Centrum really comes alive with different live music, entertainers, parties down here. It's a real hub. During the daytime, Centrum is, you know, got stuff going on. You'll see people, but in the evening, it really gets packed down there because people love those parties and live music. And again, the best part is you don't have to be at the bottom of it. You can enjoy it from almost anywhere. On deck six off the Centrum, you're gonna find the Centrum shops. So this is where you can go to purchase a variety of souvenirs to take home with you. You're gonna find clothing, you're gonna find jewelry, you're gonna find liquor, cigarettes, and everything else you can possibly purchase on a Royal Green Cruise. It's gonna be right here in the Centrum shops. The Centrum shops are only open when your cruise ship is out in international waters. When you're docked somewhere, it will be closed, but you can go here and view a variety of different things. Like again, here we have perfume and there's all sorts of souvenirs you can purchase. Now, the nice thing about some of these there, especially the perfumes and the liquor and the tobacco, is that it is duty free. So you might be able to save a little bit of money. Again, it kind of behooves you to do your research to figure out what's a better deal, but there are a lot of people who do purchase bottles of liquor or tobacco to bring home. If you do purchase a bottle of liquor, it will be held for you on board and give it to you to your stateroom on the last morning. So you can't buy a bottle of liquor on day one and then enjoy it for the rest of the cruise. The idea is you're bringing it home, not consuming it on board. Now, Port Merchants is where you can go to again to get more souvenirs and liquor and duty-free products here. You know, when it comes to the souvenir shops, I just like to browse. I love window shopping, walking through here. Maybe you find something really cool. Maybe you find, you know, a Royal Caribbean or Grandeur of the Seas branded item. These are all available. And in terms of the deals, you may find in the central area of the center of shops, as you're walking through between the shops, there can be different tables set up with sales and whatnot. But hey, at the end of the day, you might be looking for a nice way to commemorate your cruise. A lot of people love having something that has the ship's name on, or they just love Royal Caribbean and want to have a Royal Caribbean branded item, or perhaps it's something that's also celebrating where they went on your itinerary. Oftentimes you'll find t-shirts and other knickknacks that have the name of the places you visited. You're also buy lanyards here and, you know, basically just pick something up. Whether or not you want to purchase anything in the Centrum shops, up to you, but all the, everything in there does cost extra. The schooner bar is deck six midship, and the schooner bar is probably the signature venue on any vision class ship. The schooner bar is just massive, and it's a beautifully decorated nautical theme bar that you can go to to enjoy, of course, drinks. That's probably the number one reason to go here. You'll also find trivia. And in the evening, there'll be actually be a piano player that plays all sorts of great tunes in here. But the nice thing about the schooner bar, of course, is the views from the bar, because as you can see here, it's a beautifully decorated nautical bar. And then on top of that, you have views of the ocean right nearby. As you can see here, somebody finally listened to me and got the lava flow with Kraken rum. There you go. Actually, I don't think there's any Kraken rum and there's still another fail, but make sure you ask for Kraken rum. So don't make Angie's mistakes again. <laughs> Trivia is a very popular event here in the schooner bar. In fact, in the cruise compass or the Royal Caribbean app, you'll see a variety of activities listed all around the ship. But I think the signature event in the schooner bar is definitely the piano player that comes in here in the evening hours. They'll play all sorts of piano classics. Elton John, Billy Joel, Lady Gaga. It really is a lot of cool things in there. Giovanni's Table on deck six is our first specialty restaurant on Grandeur of the Seas. So to dine at Giovanni's Table, you need to pay extra. There's a cover charge per person to dine here. Giovanni's Table is a classic Italian restaurant. You're gonna find plenty of pastas and meats and all sort of Italian cuisine to enjoy. Now you do need reservations to eat at Giovanni's. You can book one before the cruise or you can book it on board. Typically, you're gonna find the highest demand for any specialty restaurant on probably formal night. But if you're looking to make a reservation, my advice is definitely pre-book before the cruise. You can either get a discount by booking an individual restaurant or purchase a dining package, which allows you to eat at multiple specialty restaurants, including maybe just Giovanni's every single night if you'd like to during your cruise. The great thing about Giovanni's is they make their pastas fresh and they just offer a lot of Italian food. There will be Italian night in the main dining room, but that's only one night. So if you're looking to get Italian food otherwise, or a different selection of Italian food, you can find it at especially restaurants like Giovanni's Table. My advice is to order again 
probably an entree and then a pasta. Of course, if your entree is a pasta, that's okay too, but don't be afraid to ask for more than one. You are allowed to get more than one item here at Giovanni's table. So you can get a pasta and an entree, maybe two appetizers or so. Again, that's totally up to you. The cover charge includes all of that. Another specialty restaurant on Grandeur of the Seas is Chops Grill, located also Deck 6 Midship. Chops Grill is the classic Royal Caribbean specialty steakhouse restaurant. There is an additional cost to dine here, and just like Giovanni's, you pay a cover charge, and then all the food is included at Chops. Now, Chops offers a good variety of food, but if you're going to Chops, you're going because you really want a good steak, and that's what it's all about here. Filet mignon, New York strip, ribeye, they've got that, along with some other great food as well. The South Pacific Lounge is also located on Deck 6. The South Pacific Lounge is a multi-purpose venue that can host a variety of different events. You might find trivia in here. You might find bingo or karaoke. And it's kind of an interesting venue, certainly a venue that has not really been replicated on newer ships in the last couple of decades, but still exists over here. It's a rather large area. And what's great about it is there's lots of seating, a big stage, and oftentimes you're gonna find lots of guest interaction events in here. Again, karaoke is huge on Royal Caribbean. And when it comes to this particular lounge, you're gonna find plenty of karaoke, people dancing and live bands in here. It's a fun activity. The Crown Lounge is located right also nearby. The Crown Lounge is relegated only for guests who are Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle members on their cruise. This is an exclusive area for Royal Caribbean's top tier cruisers. And the reason to go in here is for the Diamond Concierge themselves, or of course, the drinks that are served here in the evening hours or the hors d'oeuvres. And of course, there's a coffee machine as well in the morning, or actually it's 24 hours that you can use, but I think most people go in the morning to get it. The hors d'oeuvres in the evening hours are very popular and you can get something to eat along with your drink. It's think of it more like a special lounge dedicated just for people who again are in that top tier. And all you need to do is be a diamond member or higher, and then your key card will allow you to get in here. The great thing about the Crown Lounge is that you have great views of the water it's right on the back of the ship so what a great spot to enjoy a cocktail and a view especially in the evening hours as the sun is setting it's absolutely beautiful there's a variety of different drinks you can order here and being a diamond member or higher you can use your complimentary drink vouchers within the area the palladium theater is our next stop it's on deck five and six forward the theater is where you can go to enjoy evening entertainment throughout your cruise you might find some events here in the morning or afternoon, but not as many really when you're going to the theater, it's probably for a show. Now, Granger may not have full Broadway shows like some of the newer ships out there, but you're gonna find comedians, musical reviews, and live music performed in the theater. There's no cost to use the theater. It is included in your cruise fare, and it's really nice. I mean, you can find a variety of different events every night. There'll be a different show performed in here. Again, there may be a headliner, maybe a comedian, or a featured production show. The cool thing about it is that the theater is very large, usually easy to get into. You do not need reservations, and it's just nice to be able to get in here, enjoy an evening show. For a lot of people, going on a Royal Green cruise is, you know, dinner and then a show, or show and then a dinner, depending on what time your dinner time is. You get the idea. Again, in the Royal Green app, you'll see the different show times, and the shows are really cool to check out. There is a casino on Grandeur of the Seas in Deck 5 midship. The casino, well, of course, costs extra. But the casino is your opportunity to try your luck and there's slot machines and craps tables and blackjack and poker. And really, if you're into gambling, this is a good spot for you. There is a casino bar also located within the casino and you can go here to grab a drink on your way either before, after, or during gambling. But for a lot of people, the casino is a big highlight of the cruise experience because people like to try their luck. It's just the same way people go to a pool and they think of going on a cruise as being at the pool. A lot of people think of also the casino as a way to, again, you know, spend some money if they'd like to, but you don't have to, of course, gamble to have a good time or drink to have a good time or be at the pool to have a good time, but this is all available to you should you want to try it. You're also going to find an outdoor promenade deck on deck five. The outdoor promenade deck is just one of the most pretty areas on the ship. It goes around pretty much almost the entire ship and it allows views all around. You get the sea breeze. For sunset, this is probably one of the best places to go. This is a quiet area to enjoy. Maybe you want to read a book or just simply enjoy the sound of the ocean, take a nap, Tony Diaz. You can do that here by simply finding one of the chairs, sit back and enjoy the experience over there. My favorite thing to do is go to the back of Grand Jury the Seas on the promenade deck, go out here to the back, watch the wake views. Oh, it's very relaxing and serene. I could just sit out here. I wish they put loungers back here because I would love to spend more some time out here. And it's really quiet. There's not a lot of people walking by. 
There's also the forward elevator bank, and there are two elevator banks. One's in the centrum, that's the midship, and then the forward elevator bank, and the forward elevator bank is where you can go to access, again, the front of the ship. You can easily walk back and forth between the two, but if you find one area being very busy, you can always go to the other one and use that elevator instead. We're gonna head all the way up to the top, deck 11, the Viking Crown Lounge midship is where you can go to enjoy, again, a really pretty spot on board. The Viking Crown Lounge is a signature Royal Caribbean venue, at the very top and offers views almost surrounding the entire ship. It's a really pretty area. Most people don't even know that it exists until maybe later on in the cruise. So make sure you make an effort to get up here because this is arguably one of the best vantage points in all of grandeur of the seas. It's totally enclosed in glass and allows you to get great views of the pool deck and the area around you for sail away. If you're not really big on the pool party or maybe it's too hot out or both, you can go up to the Viking Crown Lounge, get the same views and air conditioning, and of course, enjoy the drinks there. The great thing about this area is just, again, the vantage points, how pretty it is. And throughout the day, there'll be different things going on. In fact, in the evening hours, you can see here, there's a silent disco in which they give you headphones. And depending on which music selection you'd like to, you can listen to that. So basically, if without the headphones on, you hear no music. With the headphones on, you do, and you're definitely see a lot of people dancing and switching between track A and track B. The Concierge Club is also located deck 11 midship. The Concierge Club is the suite lounge for suite guests and Pinnacle Club members. So you need to be staying in a suite or be a Pinnacle Club member in Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society in order to get up here. This is a reserved area just for them. Similar to the Crown Lounge, the Concierge Club is a dedicated area in which you can enjoy a coffee machine 24 hours a day. There's drinks in the evening, hors d'oeuvres, you kind of get the idea. And of course, the Concierge themselves is also available there to help out any suite guests. Izumi Specialty Restaurant is the other specialty restaurant on the grandeur of the season. Izumi is a Japanese cuisine restaurant in which they have sushi primarily. There's also other Japanese cuisine served here. There's no hibachi on this ship, like maybe you've seen on other Royal Caribbean cruise ships. But to dine here, you're either gonna pay a la carte in which you only pay for the items you order. There's also a fixed price menu. My advice is actually the fixed price menu is not a great idea. You get less food for it. So just order individually. Every item you order has a fixed cost to it. So you can you know pick and choose accordingly. Adventure Ocean is deck 10 midship. Adventure Ocean is the kids programming that's complimentary, including your cruise fare. It's available for kids between the ages of three and 12 years old. And Adventure Ocean is where you can go to drop your kids off. It's supervised and it's separated by age group. So three to five, six to eight, nine to 11 or 12 is where your kids can go during the cruise. And there's different activities offered on there that's age specific, that's gonna be more entertaining for them. My kids loved Adventure Ocean when they were that age because it allowed them to, first of all, play. Number two, meet other kids. And number three, not be bored with mom and dad. And Adventure Ocean has no cost up until 10 p.m. After 10 p.m., there is an hourly charge for it. I think it's well worth it because you can stay up there until about 2 a.m. And it's really great for parents and kids alike. The Royal Babies and Tots Nursery is for toddlers and infants between the age of six and 36 months old. Now, the nursery has a charge for it every hour that you're in there, but as a parent, this was a godsend when we started cruising with our kids because it allowed our kids when they were that age to be able to enjoy time without us. We could go for dinner without them. It was really nice. There's also an arcade on board and the Fantasies, get it, Teens Center. And this is the teen club that is for teenagers up to the age of 17. So Adventure Ocean is more juvenile, obviously, based on the ages here, but this is a dedicated area just for teenagers to go and hang out. And it's a little less organized in the sense there isn't like, we're all gonna do this now but it's an opportunity for teens to hang out and meet other teens on board and kind of socialize and have a good time. As I mentioned, there is also the video arcade on board, Challengers Arcade, Deck 10, Midship is where you can find video games. All video games here do cost extra, it's per game. And if you want to bring your kids up here and give it a try, you can certainly do that. Good luck getting them out of there, but every game does cost extra to enjoy, but if you'd like to go to the arcade, it is available. We're now gonna check out, of course, the staterooms on Grand Tour of the Seas, because we kind of overlooked that, but there are gonna be staterooms on deck two, three, four, seven, and eight. And depending on which room you choose for your cabin, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons of going with, you know, inside, ocean view, balcony, or suite, different prices, different sizes. There isn't a right or wrong answer as to which room you should choose. But we wanted to show you as an example, here's an inside room. And inside rooms tend to be the cheapest cabin available on board in terms of the least expensive, but it gives you the basics. You're gonna have a bed, you're gonna have a sitting area, you're gonna have your own private bathroom. And the argument for an inside room is number one, the cost, it's gonna be relatively inexpensive. Number two, there's so much going on on the cruise and things happening all around you, ports you're visiting. So 
how much time will you really spend in the cabin? But as you can see here, there's a TV sitting area, there's a closet. There's basically just enough space to keep you, you know, be able to shower and change and sleep. And for a lot of people, that's all they need. Other people do like having more space, more amenities, and they're willing to pay for it. But looking here at an inside cabin, you kind of get an idea of what the basics are and what the minimum would be essentially to go on a ship like Grandeur this season, what your cabin would look like. My advice is to speak with your travel agent about options, look for different prices, and of course, or if there are any sales out there, you might be able to upgrade yourself to something nicer, but there's nothing wrong with this kind of a room also because it's purely functional, it serves its purpose, and there's so much happening on board and around you that it may not be so much of an issue. So there you have a look at Grandeur of the Seas, a classic Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Again, she may be the smallest and oldest cruise ship in Royal Caribbean's fleet, but that doesn't make it a bad choice. You can get some great deals on Grandeur, go to some amazing places as well, and have a great cruise vacation. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite spot on Grandeur of the Seas? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on that. And also while you're below our video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.